All right, so now we're going to take a look at using the simulated logic analyzer in MPLAB X. This is an example of a real logic analyzer, or two different logic analyzers, but, uh, but we also have access to a simulated one inside of the compiler tools if you don't have access to one for real. So I'm going to create a project for the Atmega 328P. I'm going to use the simulator and XC8 as the compiler. I will create the project name here. And we will write a simple little C program that uh, changes the value on one of the port bits. So here's the main function that I'm writing. So this is the template in C. In MPLAB X, I'm going to modify it to include the definition for the uh, assumed frequency of the board that I'm using, in this case that it has a uh, CPU frequency of 16 megahertz or 16 million, so 16 million UL. I'm going to include two libraries, the uh, overarching xc.h library for MPLAB X as well as the util uh, delay.h uh, library that is typical to GCC for the at megas. All right, in order to have a place where I can get my debugger to pause, I put two ASM no operations at the beginning and end of my function. And I'll put breakpoints on those later. I'm going to set the data direction for port B on bit 5 to be a 1, so that PB5 is an output. And now I'm going to put in a delay. So that delay comes from util delay.h. And so I'm going to do it in, uh, in this case, in microseconds. There's also a millisecond version, but for the logic analyzer on MPLAB X, it's really better to be doing things in the microsecond range. It runs out of space otherwise, in terms of its samples. So here we go. So a delay of 100 microseconds. And I'm going to make port B, bit 5, a 1. So it's going to go high. This represents like a, an LED turning on. And uh, then I'm going to copy that and just paste it in. And I'm going to change the on for port B bit 5 to an off. So an and equals. And I'm going to not that. But I'm still doing the bit shift on port B5. Okay. And I'm going to repeat that. So I've got on off, on off. I'm going to put breakpoints. Actually, I'll do that on the ASM not right there. So at the very beginning and the very end, so there's a place to start the debugger on and where it will pause afterwards so we can capture on the logic analyzer. Okay, so I'm running the debugger right now and it pauses at the first NOP, the first no operation. Now I'm going to go to the logic analyzer in the simulator option here. So you saw how I got that using MPLAB X. And now I'm waiting uh, to get that log logic analyzer up and running. Here it is. Now, getting it to display in MPLAB X can be a little bit of a chore. You have to manage the window. So I'm going to put it off to the side like this. So I'm dragging that tab over so it shows up. But unfortunately, I can't see the options for it. So you got to expand it. And then you see that um, hammer button at the bottom for properties. That's what you need to get access to. I'm going to do PB5. I'm going to insert it into the selected pins right there. It's now in, so I will be sampling using the logic analyzer PB5. All right. And by default, it goes to an instruction cycle uh, time base, which sometimes what we want, but uh, I think it's nice to also have it in terms of actual time. But you can see it right here. This is this is in terms of instruction cycles. And you can see how many instruction cycles uh, the first delay encountered and the second delay, etc. So we can count based on instruction cycles. However, we can modify the logic analyzer so that it's in a, an actual time base, like microseconds or nanoseconds, etc. So we're going to go into the project properties. We're going to go into simulator and we're going to adjust, first of all, 
how many, uh, what the, the, the frequency is of the clock. So we're going to make it 16 million or 16 megahertz. You just have to set the first value, the second value, the RC uh, settings don't really matter. They don't matter. So now we've set the simulator to know that this simulated chip is supposed to run at 16 megahertz. I'm making sure that I've got PB5 and now I'm going to go to real time instead of instruction cycles in the logic analyzer settings. And we can see that now we have a time, we're going to have a time based um, output for the logic analyzer. So I'm going to run the debugger again. It'll halt on that first no operation. And I continued to the second no operation. And now we can see that I've got 100 microseconds across the first on period and 100 microseconds across the second on period. Now let's change that timing. So it's 10 microseconds and 50 microseconds. This could be representative of like a pulse width modulation or something like that in a microcontroller. So I'm going to run it again to halt on the first no operation. I'm going to continue. It halts in the second one. And now what we have is a 50 microsecond on time and a 10 microsecond off time. So the logic analyzer, because it's been set up properly, shows us what we want.